Yes, guys, what's going on? Hashtag Shura here. Welcome back to another video on the channel here today, ladies and gentlemen. We have got ourselves some 20 and 0 foot champions custom tactics for you guys. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. I had previously recorded this intro, which is why into the video you might see that I'm in different clothes, whatever. Basically, I recorded this video, then ended up playing Weekend League last night, and we went 20 and 0 with these exact tactics that I'd done. So the tactics we used in this video are the tactics we went 20 and 0 this Weekend League with, which I will have the highlights up for very very soon in the coming days but yeah it's about time we did our first custom tactics video of the year so in this video we're going to be looking at four different formations the best sort of tactics etc for you guys to use in foot champions division rivals to get yourself some more wins etc if you know what i'm trying to see that was scottish for way too long if you do enjoy the video drop a like and also subscribe to the channel guys be very much appreciated and without further ado let's just jump straight into the tactics mate i didn't really want to talk about this on camera <laughs> jesus i'll be honest that's just a massive problem 11.5 million for this man. However, I have finally played my first few games with him the other day and he is just an absolute joke. He's not even gone down in price. Like, that's literally got two days left on it. It's already got a bit of six mil. I've seen him going for 12 mil, 12.5 mil. Like, what is this? But guys, that is the squad we're using as well. Along with Janola, really, really solid player as well. Kind of bought him at the same time. 1.7 mil. I feel like he's going to go up in price even more, I, I'll be honest. But we'll see how the pro restrictions all come out. Anyway, you guys are here for custom tactics, not to look at the squad. But yeah, that is what we have so far in the team. And without further ado, let's jump into some tactics and see what's going on in the local squad. So guys, these are obviously post-patch custom tactics. So we literally had the patch come out like yesterday or the day before. Obviously, we've had some finesse shots, nerfed a little bit. They've nerfed that really weirdly, by the way. Like they didn't put the patch out properly or something. And then they ended up putting more patches in or something i don't know but i think they've made keepers a little bit worse in the box etc but yeah guys these are my four tactics right here now four two three one is a very basic formation in fifa it's one that's been extremely effective in many many iterations of fifa now it's one of the most iconic i suppose formations in fifa is literally the text right this is literally just a formation to close out a game now obviously we had five back working a lot last year i don't know how much that's going to be relevant this year i've not seen any five backs being used so far in order to close out for some games for you guys in rivals in foot champs that type of thing i would advise this formation now pretty basic we're not going to go through loads of stuff on this one we've literally got the strike on getting behind and then literally everyone on comeback on defense and now Bloody hell, what a scumbag. But you know, this is literally just if you're winning a game by a goal or two and you just want to close out a game and you're maybe not feeling as confident or something like that and you're taking on quite a lot of pressure, you probably just switch to this to try and close out a game. So we have everything pretty balanced though, width and depth and width again, all on 50. You know, with your depth, I don't want to put the depth on zero to the point where the players are just in your own box the whole time. You are just going to get peppered. You want to obviously give yourself a bit of a chance. But yeah, I do not advertise drop back. I really do do not like this at all, but it's one of them ones. People are going to do it against you, so you're just going to have to do it yourself. And if you don't, you're just not going to win as many games. So, but let's move on from that one. That's one that you could literally just close a game out with. I certainly wouldn't advise sticking with any sort of drop back throughout the game or that type of thing. It's just not a good way to play. And to be honest, you just bring more pressure upon yourself anyway. So that's enough for that one. We'll get on to the next formation here, guys, which is the 4-4-2 2 variation. So the more the defensive one. Now, again, this is a very defensive one. I'm not going to talk about this for too long. We just got balance, balance, balance. And look how balanced everything is here. We've got the players on box on four. Can be on five or four. Really is not too dramatic. But we'll just leave it on four for now. But again, this is another formation that I would maybe switch to if I just felt a bit more chilled out in a foot champs game. Now, this can be a very good one to switch to if you are someone who likes to play 4-4-2 and stay on 4-4-2. But the game's getting a bit more difficult for you. You can put the CDMs on stay back while attacking along with the wingers on comeback on the fence. I've left the strikers on just basic defensive support, but you could also put them on come back on defense as well. And with the fact that finesse shots have been nerfed a little bit now, it's obviously going to make it even harder for your opponent to score, which is kind of annoying, to be honest. I think finesse shots have a place in the game. It just depends how powerful they are. If they're too good to the point where you can just score them every time, it's ridiculous, but I hope they've not nerfed them too badly. And I do think they can still go in. I've been using R9 and that type of thing, and they can still fly in with R9. I'm sure you guys will have seen some pro players using them types of players. And even you guys who've got, you know, your Neymars, uh, CR7s and Bappes, they will still be able to score finesse shots, which is very good against these types of formations. I don't want to promote either of these defensive formations, but you just are going to get people use them in foot champs. So the best chance you have is trying to use them against them. And next up, guys, we have got ourselves two formations that I use mainly in foot champions. And this one we're about to go on to now is my main formation for foot champions, division rivals, any sort of pro games that I play in. This is my current tactic that I'm enjoying the most in FIFA 22. Now, as you can see, extremely balanced formation, 50 width, 50 depth, 50 width on offense as well, and the defensive style balance, build up play balanced, chance creation balance. I think we're quite a balanced person, pals. And then the players on box on six, 
that is for no reason other than I literally just want a little bit more attacking presence going forward, along with the corners and along with the free kicks. They can also be quite effective this year. There's corners going in left, right, and center. And with free kicks as well, if you have players forward, that type of thing, you can make some really nice set pieces with a lot of bodies forward. So that's why I like that on three and corners on three as well. But I just like really basic tactics, guys, to be honest. So that's what I like to stick with in a 4-4-2, which is obviously one of the most renowned and basic formations that we've had in the years of FIFA as well. And it's certainly my favorite so far this year. We'll have to see if that changes as the meta maybe progresses as the year goes on. R9 on the left, Ginola on the right here up front. Now, it doesn't really matter too much with these because to be honest, they've both got five-star weak foot. So that's absolutely sound. With my wingers, Mbappe on the left, Messi on the right. I obviously want Mbappe to cut in on the right and finesse that type of thing. Same with Messi cutting on his left and shoot. And then the rest of the team, obviously quite basic. So that's in the 4-4-2. And then into the player instructions, guys, we go here. Ronaldo and Ginola on getting behind. Now, obviously these are great for through balls, over the top through balls, that type of thing. And also getting your team up the pitch. If you guys know what I'm saying. Then on Mbappe and Messi, I have these literally just on balance, most basic balance for a winger, right? I don't want to have them on comeback on the fence. I don't want to have them on like stay forward or any of that type of thing. I just want a basic balanced winger who's going to sort of be there where I need him to be there. Now guys, one of the most important bits about this custom tactic, my current one, is what I'm doing with my midfielders at the moment. So I've currently got both of them on balanced attack. Now you'll see in pro games and in the pro meta, it's quite common that players will put one of the CDMs or CMs, whatever it is, on stay back while attacking. And then you sort of have one other one sort of progress forward a little bit more, if that makes sense. However, I'm quite enjoying at the moment playing it quite a bit more attacking when I'm going forward. And I like to have more bodies going forward, more options, that type of thing, more for your opponent to think about. Using Pogba and Bruno Fernandes, who've obviously got great passing, I'm able to ping some driven passes into the strikers, along with some great over top through balls. So if I've got both of these guys going forward, it just gives me more options and that type of thing. Now, I do have Pogba on cover center and Bruno on cover wing. That is another thing that is quite common and you guys will see it a lot. And I would advise you guys trying as well is having one on cover center, one on cover wing, right? Don't get me wrong. They do both cover both areas-ish anyway. And obviously, you can control them yourself. Having one on one, one on the other is just a good mix and a good balance in midfield. Now, I would say that you guys could try putting one on stay back. But for how I'm enjoying the game at the moment and trying to get the ball into my strikers as much as possible, playing them both on balance attack just gives me more options. So that'll be my main 4-4-2 custom tactic there, guys. That's one that I would advise using the most in the game at the moment. And I think you guys should definitely try it out. Now, another thing you might see a lot with pros is the depth on 70. Now, that's technically depth seven from what we had with previous years, which I'm pretty sure used to offside trap for you. Now, I'm not sure if it 100% does still, but it definitely has your team obviously much higher up with 70 depth. So that is certainly an idea as well. I'm just currently comfortable with it on 50. I might up it to 60 soon, up it to 70 and try that out. But for now, I'm comfortable on 50. But I certainly wouldn't advise going any lower than that or then you're just going to bring more pressure on yourself than you want to have. And to finish this off, guys, we have got ourselves the absolute YOLO formation. YOLO, Jesus Christ. Am I living in 2012? We have got ourselves the 4-3-1-2. Now, a very, very overpowered formation from last year for sure. This is absolutely causing my brain mayhem. <laughs> while playing foot champions for sure but we've got defensive style constant pressure this is going to be a formation guys that you want to use if you know you're one or two goals down and there's not long left to go in the game and you're gonna to have to accept the fact that yes you might concede some goals here do you know what i mean this is literally just go for it and if this does pay off you can definitely get two or three goals back in very quick succession if you're playing against someone that is not very good at getting out of constant pressure you're gonna have a field day you're gonna absolutely score plenty of goals son but you've obviously got to be careful when you're using constant pressure because if you use it for too long in a game your players are just going to be absolutely gone with the wind stamina wise and you just are going to lose and that's why you know overload ball side is a tactic that you really should not use at any point unless you literally put it on for like the last minute of a game to try and close it out or something you just should not use that i did it in my weekend league last weekend from minute one accidentally i'd pressed it we lost the flawless record because of it so don't do that but yeah constant press is similar as well i would not advise putting it on for the whole game guys or your players are just going to lose so much stamina so the width on 70 the depth on 70 as well we're trying to push the team up more here that's just how it has to be when you're absolutely going for it in this game rb square balls switching it across the pitch and that type of thing are really really effective they're very direct and they're very accurate as well if you ping it from one side of the pitch to the other so if you have high width on your players, you can really stretch out your opponent and create a lot of chances as well. So that's why I add the width up as well. Build up play, fast build up and forward runs. Now this just means, I mean, as you can see by the little dynamic picture there, your team is just absolutely pinging up the pitch. If finesse shots are a little bit worse now post patch, that's what we're going to be seeing more of these driven passes into green time shots in the box, low drivens, that type of thing. Low drivens are also working really well. I'd seriously advise you guys trying some low drivens. So yeah, that defensive style width is just 
you know, if you're trying to switch it out to your fullbacks, that type of thing. And then we've also got the width very, very high on offense as well, especially to ping it forward to your strikers and your wingers who are far out wide as well. The players in the box very high along with the corners, along with the free kicks. And like I said, again, guys, this is just a formation. We're just going to go for it in. You might end up conceding a goal or two, or you might put your opponent under loads of pressure and absolutely smash him. As you can see here, Ginola on the left, Ronaldo on the right. Again, really does not matter too much. Both on getting behind as well. We're literally just flying forward with this formation. So we've literally got nothing, no one on comeback on the fence or anything except the right back and the left back. Now, the reason for this is just because when you're using this type of formation, you can just manually trigger your fullbacks to go forward anyway if you really need the help from them as well. Like, we still do want to try and win a game of FIFA with this formation, if that makes sense. So you don't want them just completely out of position all the time. So that's why I just have them still on stay back while attacking. But yeah, guys, that will sort of finish off my main four custom tactics. Now, these two, again, very defensive ones that I wouldn't advise you ever play a game and staying on it. I think these are just ones that you can switch to to sort of try and close the game out later on. But these two tactics, especially this 4-4-2, I'd really advise you guys giving it a go. I know it's very balanced, but I think that is kind of the best way. But the few player instructions we've got on them, like, you know, sort of get in behind with the strikers, balanced attack on the midfielders who seem to really get forward when you have them on balanced attack. As long as you don't have them on stay back while attacking, they're very, very effective, your midfielders. And that's one thing to not be underrated in FIFA for sure, especially in this year's iteration. But yeah, guys, that will finish off the custom tactics for foot champions and division rivals. I hope you guys found that helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if you use any of these formations and you have any success with them. Uh, hopefully you do have some success with them. But yeah, guys, we started the RTG on stream as well the other day. And we're going to be playing champs on that account this weekend as well as on the main. So we'll have plenty of content flying out as well along with the player reviews hopefully starting next week as well. And yeah, that'll be it for me, guys. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend and I'll catch you all on the next one.